Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is Tuesday, April 10th, the regular meeting of the Buckeye Board of Education. It is 707. Roll call, please. Berger? Here. Trumpelman? Here. Sabarchi? Here. Bella? Here. Please join me and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. There is a flag above the mountain there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The meeting agenda statement. This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There's a time for public participation during the <coughs> meeting as indicated in the agenda. Approval of minutes. Resolve that the Buckeye Board of Education approve the minutes for the special and regular meetings of March 13, 2018 and March 19, 2018. A motion, please. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. As corrected. There's an error of the number of board members present on the March 19th meeting, and it missed that. So that's the first one. Second. 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 Any other um, corrections or additions to the minutes? Roll call. Erko? Yes. Sabarchi? Yes. Bell? Yes. Gong? Yes. Following our recommendations that have been identified for approval as part of the consent agenda for this meeting, if a board member wishes to remove any item from this agenda for further discussion prior to taking action, please let either the superintendent or board president know. Approval of consent agenda. Resolve that the Buckeye Board of Education approve the consent agenda of April 10th, 2018 as presented with some additions and changes. Them. Yes, please. So, under new business, uh, the approval of the BSN Sports Corporate Sponsorship Agreement will move up to letter I under superintendent recommendations with its own motion, having strategic plan going to A, first reading, goes to B, first reading, student curriculum, to letter C, first reading of student curriculum, to letter D. Under number 14, personnel, the Washington DC Parent Chaperone will have its own letter, letter E, and we're adding the word PTO to the full care under donations. Those are the items I noticed. A motion? Here this 
to join us and recognize them, and we'd like to have them all come forward here with our principals to present. of Buckeye Junior High and with me this evening is Nicholas Kutz. Uh, Nick has been recommended by our team of teachers to be Buckeye Junior High Student of the Month. Nick is an all-around impressive young man is what they had to say. He's kind, diligent, and humble. He aspires to work in the field of chemical engineering someday while noting history as his favorite school subject with a special fondness of the dark ages of medieval times. Along with being a dedicated student, Nick also enjoys reading both fiction and nonfiction, as well as watching the occasional documentary. Nick is also a part of our school's academic challenge team and plays percussion in the band and hopes the next day join the marching band with the high school. He's also a part of our 4-H program and enjoys showing broiler chickens, and in his spare time, enjoys riding his bike and playing video games. Nicholas Kutz. <laughs> Dayton uh, 
to uh, think here. I'm not sure which field of engineering yet, but it would be the university field. So congratulations to them. that Mark could not be here, that's Holly Porter. Um, and Holly is an excellent student as well. Um, just involved in about most of the same things as in jazz. She's a runner. Uh, she's involved in SAD, those kind of things. So we sat and couldn't see Holly tonight. But congratulations to her. Well. Students will meet me over here, please. <coughs> okay, we'll get back to the meeting then. <coughs> we have some other um, students here tonight that we'll get to in a little bit, but just um, for the students and the parents, anytime you need to leave, it's fine with us. We understand that. So don't feel bad if you need to leave. Uh, Treasurer's report. I have two items just resolved in the Board of Education as presented, including all internal budget submitted certificates and appropriations to the county auditor and one by the treasurer's office, which is your appendix A. And letter B, approve workers' compensation group rating, resolved that the Buckeye Board of Education approve their re enrollment in the Ohio School Comp 2019 workers' compensation group rating program. This program guides the claim management services for workers' compensation and unemployment compensation. The annual fee is $2,045 for policy year 2019. We have some administrators presenting tonight. Uh, Mr. Harrington, our athletic director, is going to start us off. All right, uh, my name is Tom Harrington. I'm the athletic director here at the Buckeye Local School District. Uh, the first thing that you'll see up here is uh, a snapshot of where we're at as a, a school district with the All Sport Cup. Uh, we're currently in first place. Uh, we've won this cup uh, a number of times in past years and it looks like we're on track again to do so this year. Our, our fall was outstanding and our, our winter athletes have really uh, continued the outstanding um, athletic season that we've been having. Uh, the first group I'd like to talk about is our bowlers. Um, every bowler this year improved on their average. Zach Radon was the most improved bowler for our conference. He had a game high of uh, 255. Um, Matt, Matt Denninger was the highest boys average of 180, and he had a game high of 244, and a high two game series of 452. Ben Herman had a high game of 243, and 411 with the series with the final average of 155. And Alexa Fergus had a high game of 187 and two game series of 344 for the girls. And um, one thing you'll notice with every uh, sport that we have is their GPA. Uh, the bowler's GPA was 3.058. Our, our kids really do an amazing job in the classroom as well, so we wanted to recognize that. Uh, another successful team we had this winter was our wrestlers, probably our most successful in terms of what they did on the mat. Uh, we had a lot of kids make all conference. Uh, first team was Eddie Pink, Jake Bartonelli, Mike Clark, Jared Lowry, and Jared Setliff. Second team was Nick Neitenbach, uh, Doug Brown. Third team was Anthony Ashley, Sam Rako, uh, and Nick Scanlon. All district is an award that's um, voted on outside of coaching, so it's either depending on the sport done by media or some other outside group. Uh, first team all district was Mike Clark. Uh, second team was Jake Bartonelli. Honorable mention was Jared Setliff, Jared Lowry, and Nick Neidenbach. 
And then all Ohio, uh, second place in the state was Mike Clark, an honorable mention was Jake Bartonelli with fourth place, and they had a, a team GPA of 3.072. They were also PAC dual champs and PAC tournament champs. So they really had an amazing season. And then on, on, we actually had to put two slides together for them. They had so many accomplishments. Um, there's also a Lorain County Wrestling Coaches and Officials Association that votes, and you can see we had a number of of our student athletes. Some of the ones that we haven't mentioned yet were um, Austin DiBiasio, uh, I believe Anthony Ashley, and then I believe our other ones also won awards. I'll, I'll keep it moving along for the sake of keeping the meeting going. And then we also had the Wrestler of the Year for Division Two with Mike Clark. And Coach Koppel didn't put it on here, but he was also um, Coach of the Year. So we wanna recognize him as well. Um, our cheerleaders had a, had a terrific fall and winter. Um, they attended the UCA camp at Ashland University and they won the Tradition Award for Outstanding Leadership and Spirit. And, and um, I have to say, as a, also as a basketball coach and, and watching them in football as well, they do a tremendous job of getting the energy of the crowd. One of the things I'm always hearing about uh, when I speak with other schools is the amazing home atmosphere that we have at all of our events. So a lot of that goes to them. Um, and they do a great job with our school spirit. And they also had a 3.322 GPA. Uh, we have one diver, Morgan Bacalar, and she won every competition that she competed in except for one this year. She also qualified for districts and finished ninth. And she also qualified for a Viking Invitational which is uh, a tremendous accomplishment because you have to complete 11 dives in order to qualify for that. She was able to do that this year. Our girls basketball team um, had, a, had a nice season with an overall record of uh, 14 and 10. Uh, first team in the, in the conference was Grace Allen. Second team, Gabby Blancy and Madison Ross. Honorable mention, Tatum Wittenmeyer and all district was honorable mention Grace Allen, and they had an outstanding GPA of 3.765. Our boys basketball team also had a successful year with an overall record of 17 and seven. We had two first team performers in Brock Brumfield and Anthony Watkins. Second team was uh, Justin Kennedy, honorable mention Spencer Imes, and then all district Anthony Watkins um, and our team GPA was 3.368. Our, our gymnastics team had the, the highest GPA out of all of our groups, and, and they had a, another record-setting uh, performance this winter. They won every, or they won the most um, events in school history. They won the Beauty and the Beast, and, and one of the things that you have to understand about this is there's many, many teams at these events. So it's very difficult to win an event, let alone the amount that they won. Uh, the Beauty and the Beast at Worcester, uh, Flip for the Cure, Rock and Roll Classic at Brexville, and then the Win the Day Invitational in Cincinnati. We also had a number of district qualifiers. Our entire team did, and that's a tremendous accomplishment because we compete at the highest level against schools that are sometimes double and triple our size, the way gymnastics is divided up. So um, a, a great honor for our team to qualify for districts. Individually, we had Taylor Tomey um, qualify all around and on the floor, Madison Mears on the vault, bars and floor, and Sammy Tice all around, bars, beam, and floor. And Sammy also qualified for um, the state down in Columbus and was all Ohio on the beam. So congratulations to her. And again, as you can see, their GPA, 3.861 as a team. <laughs> There's just a snapshot of all of our team GPAs. Our conference also gives away uh, an award for being a letter winner as well as having a 3.5 or above. And we have between um, fall and winter over 80 student athletes that have achieved that so far this year. And I know we're going to have some more in the spring. And then my final thing for athletics, I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Reisner, whose wife couldn't make it tonight. Uh, it was in the Medina Gazette a few weeks ago. Um, he, was, he and his wife were recipients of the L. Thomas Award, which was given out by the Medina County Hall of Fame. I know that um, he was recognized at a previous board meeting, but I thought it was worth mentioning that he's, he and his wife were recognized at um, the county level as well. 
So this award's given to someone and they made a special exception because we know they're all a partnership. Um, we gave it, they gave it to two people this year for someone who's made major uh, contributions to high school sports in a non-playing and coaching role. And we know they've done that here at Buckeye. We wanted to give them a special um, congratulations in making such a difference in our community. So congratulations to Mr. Reisner for sitting in the back. End. And if you haven't seen our teams, come on out. We have baseball, softball, and track. Our kids do amazing things, and we have quite a few home events coming up since the weather is finally turning. So we hope you come out and go Bucks. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. And it's always, uh, you always know how well they do on the courts and the fields, but it's uh, nice that you also highlight their academics, so that's a very proud of that as well. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Knapp from the Intermediate Building.
sounds, change colors, anything imaginable. Three slides I just wanted to share you just kind of some student led things that just made me really proud as the principal. Um, we have uh, this first group actually started with the junior high, it's still involved in the junior high, and it's carried up to the high school. It's called Stand By Me. It's, I'm careful to even call them a group because they even promote themselves more as a movement than they are a group, more of a movement of kindness and acceptance. Um, and it is truly student led. I mean, those kids truly lead it. Uh, Mrs. Goodwin. And um, Mrs. Corello, um, who used to work at the junior high, they kind of help out, but it's really what the students want. They've done a lot of different things from, uh, they did a kind of a dance thing after a basketball game. They have bracelets that talk about acceptance. They put stickers on uh, doors to remind people they're important. Uh, just a, a really cool group that, again, just, you know, just really, really proud of them. <clears throat> Another thing we, uh, uh, as you guys accepted earlier this year, was the recognition of creating a key club through Kiwanis. Our key club in the first year has already done a very impactful project. Again, completely student-led. Actually, even the idea of what they did was brought over from two students 
at the Career Center um, called the Thirst Project. The Thirst Project is a um, totally student-funded, so the way they do it is they get wealthy celebrities and different adults to pay for all of the management of this uh, organization and all the actual fundraising that goes on K-12 goes directly to aid. And what it is is clean water wells in specifically in Africa, Swaziland to be particular, I think most of the time. And uh, so for $500, you can raise a well, or you can create a well for a village. And so our kids, we actually had the two uh, kids from the Career Center come and present to all the high school kids, which I can't imagine doing a presentation to an entire student body at, at 18. Um, but they did that. And then that got the kids involved, and we did a thing where the, uh, the kids put money in different jars, and whoever got the most money in their jars had to get pies in the face. So, um, so this is Mr. Clayton. Now, luckily, he's, he doesn't have as much hair as other people, so it was a nice <laughs> for him. But um, there were uh, several of our teachers that got, got pies in their face and were willing to do that. And these weren't just cream pies. These were true Costco pies. So this is like a real deal. And uh, we actually raised eleven hundred dollars for that, so we actually were able to do two wells um, for uh, Swaziland. So again, totally a student thing, really, really awesome. Uh, our parent group, which we have a great parent group, even at the high school, which I think is a unique thing to Buckeye that not a lot of schools have. Um, uh, and you know, usually at the elementary, you have lots of parent involvement, and then as you get older, you, you see less and less. And, and our parents are still uh, very impactful. They truly organize and run the entire after prom. Uh, they do our gym breakfast. They do a variety of different things. This was something they did right over spring break. <clears throat> they put a post-it note. This was district wide, but they did it at the high school, so I thought I'd share it. Um, so again, not just they did the entire district. They put a post-it note on every locker. Um, even my office just got one. Um, about um, you know just a positive something to remind you know us that we're all important and we're all bad. So really cool, really cool. Thing. All right, maybe not as exciting, but um, some things that we're also doing at the high school just instructionally. You know we've really had two main focuses. We have two main groups this year. Um, we have a small group of, of teachers called our instructional committee, and it kind of drives our PLCs, which is our small teacher groups that meet. And they've done a lot of really great things this year that. Um, I think it's really leading to better instruction from uh, reviewing our DLT goals. We really dove into what those mean, evaluating our data, really trying to improve our feedback, and um, really using Google Forms kind of with that feedback. There's so much data that we can collect um, through there. We're trying to, to, to utilize that as much as we can. We also are kind of in the beginning stages of RTI at the high school, really focused on what are the tiers of instruction, what they mean, and we've actually piloted some intervention during Buckeye period that kind of excitingly is leading to greater conversation by our department heads of maybe what can we do that's a little bit bigger scope next year during our intervention of Buckeye period. Lastly, some new courses that we're offering for this year. Um, we have um, the second biomed, so again, that's that PTL, PLTW, so that's a career center uh, funded class. We have, so we'll have Biomed 1, and now we'll have human body systems, which is kind of like anatomy. We're adding three APs, uh, which are getting good solid numbers in. AP Environmental Science, which is our first life science to be kind of an upper level. We've had a lot of upper level physical sciences, so we're really excited about that. AP Spanish, because this is our first year. Next year will be our first year we'll have fifth year Spanish kids in high school because we had eighth graders take Spanish, and so now we in year five, and it's great that we're still able to provide an actual relevant high school curriculum in the fifth year of the language. Um, and so that option also will mean some of us will probably get this new thing called the Bioliteracy Seal, which is a special thing that they'll get on their phone. We have AP Psych running next year as well. Actually have almost three sections of that in its first year uh, next year, and uh, which is great because we used to lose a lot of those kids to CCP Psych, and we won't be doing that anymore. And uh, lastly, we've kind of done some things with our special ed program to provide more intervention and kind of double blocking some things with English and math so that those kids that need extra help can get basically a whole other period of extra help in the content area. Um, and it's really uh, also helping our intervention specialists be able to see them basically. So um, exciting stuff for us. I think that we're really going to be able to uh, help both our uh, advanced students and also those that might need a little extra support. I had been upcoming dates, uh, just in case, because this is a busy time of year for the high school and for everybody. 
but uh, we got into course testing and then other things, top scholar, prom, after prom, if you want to help at after prom, let us know. We can use some extra help. Uh, always senior awards, baccalaureate, and graduation all coming up here basically within a month. So, busy time. Thank you. Mr. Rosner. Creating me on the button here, right? Wait a minute. Hello everybody, I want to let you know what's going on, what I've been up to, type of trouble. Uh, we've been <clears throat> doing some uh, LED lighting, we place fixtures in high school. We'll get a rebate check back from Ohio Edison for $1,184. The elementary uh, office showcase area, if you leave out here, look at the, what's called the cans. you notice that they're nice and white. They're not that yellow looking, but they're real bright. Uh, we got uh, $3.25 uh, rebate check the remaining cans in, the, in this area here and uh, the cafeteria we did the cafeteria with this one so a lot of cans that you see sitting up there <clears throat> the nice thing about it is it's going to reduce our electric bill by quite a bit so the reason I'm trying to get all these things done so we can reduce our electric bill besides these things go in you know, 15, 10 to 15 years without having to change it we got rid of the ballast, so we're able to do that kind of work. So we're saving on labor uh, and saving on energy through the school district. So projects completed so far since my last time we talked. Uh, junior high uh, lighting is done. And I think Dan can tell you that it's really light in there. Right, Dan? Not paying attention, right? Very, very bright. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The electric cans in the common area. Uh, we, first, we finished the first uh, part of the PM on uh, the HVAC through here right now. They're going through and they're, they're cleaning, cleaning things out and we should be in better shape. The nice thing about the PM is to allow our capacitors and every other capacitors, but our, our units to run longer so we should have a longer life on it. Uh, I signed a uh, contract with uh, Republic Waste. Uh, Three year contract, going to save the district uh, $4,100 a year. That was one of the other contracts that slipped by in 2015 that we forgot to renew. So we do have it on, on that situation. Um, replace some HVAC rooftops at the high school. Uh, we purchased a PM maintenance program. This is a nice program as part of school dues. I'm going to be able to put these contracts that we keep missing on there. It'll send a reminder to us that these contracts are due, so we go out and start negotiating for that. <clears throat> I'm, work with, I'm working with Bob Arla on the high school uh, wall, and I helped design the baseball team. Upcoming projects, the HBH contro uh, C controls for the elementary. We have it on the high school. We have a unit here, but it's obsolete. It doesn't work, so we need to get the controls over so I can run them from my office and not have to come and look at this unit that doesn't work. Uh, I'd like to get uh, <coughs> continue the PM maintenance on the HVAC units. Light controls for the elementary. We have controls right now, again, it's a unit that is outdated. It's not working anymore. So we need to get that revamped and brought into where we can have central location of control. I'm going to continue upgrading the lights to LEDs. And I'm going to be overseeing the sports fields, the band fields, uh, <clears throat> and get some better grass growing in there. Uh, I have uh, a person that does our fertilizing. He's going to aerate and seed it for nothing for us. So I took advantage of it and I bought the seed. Right now you're going to see what the district, as a total district that I have on my expenses right now, uh, the total expenses that came up, that's come out of Facility expense is $605,970. And uh, purchase service and district capital repair, that's all we can leave that, but it gets showed back up again. So I don't know. That's hard to explain what's going on in that situation. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> okay. I tell. Thank you. Apparently we have an administrative challenge going on tonight, so I'll see if I can short the spirit.
So I'm just giving you an update on the five-year tech plan. Um, this is from the original tech plan. This was our vision for technology. So I just wanted to address that to say, where are we on that? So we have currently a iPad cart that is shared among the kindergarten and a second iPad cart that's shared with first grade. We were able to get two to one this year with grades two through six. And then we are one to one currently grades <coughs> seven through 10 and headed in the right direction. Um, we decided not to go with the additional MacBook Air carts at each building for the more advanced projects because of funding at the time. But um, <laughs> what we're looking at now is we would rather upgrade the labs in each building. And so I'm working on a plan for that that we can sustain. Um, every teacher in the district, save one, who is a holdout to his DAC tech, he really likes it. Um, everybody else is on the MacBook Air at this point. <coughs> and we are on our three-year replacement schedule for Chromebooks. Next year at the end of the year will be the first year that we'll be at the end of a three-year cycle. And we are not needing to start the six-year replacement schedule for MacBooks until, the, I believe it's 2019-2020. Uh, um, in instruction, our vision at that time was to provide PD on the devices, provide um, PD to help close gaps in student achievement, to increase movement towards online instructional resources, and to implement a district focus on Google Apps. I can say that we are Google saturated. I'm very happy to report that we are using docs and forms and Google classrooms everywhere, clear down to second grade. So I'm really excited about that. I think we're doing a great job with PD and getting out to help people as needed and uh, scheduling coaching sessions and whatnot. So that's pretty exciting as well. And uh, working with Dr. Collins, uh, a lot of our new curriculum, um, Purchases include online components, so we're getting lots of use out of that as well. So that's kind of where we were. Infrastructure, you want us to increase the number of wireless access points, which we continue to do. Uh, this summer's project will be kind of this library through gym and cafeteria area here. That was kind of one that got left a little bit later, but the buildings are in great shape. And we are upgrading the network as needed, so Carl's doing a great job working on that. Um, the original timeline for the five-year rollout, you can see here, this was part of what was presented in 2016. The only comments I have to make about this is that we're a little ahead of schedule on a couple things. When we reallocated the carts this year, um, the idea was to have enough to go two to one in third grade, and through the generous contributions of the junior high and the high school, we got enough carts to go two to one second and third grade because they are now with their one-to-one -one devices and we were able to repurpose those. Um, then they, so what we're looking at for next year is a appropriate purchase for kindergarten and first grade. We had initially thought several years ago that that would probably be an iPad, but what we're looking at now are like a Chromebook flip, so it works as a Chromebook, but you can flip it and use it as a tablet as well. The price point is a little bit better, but the real reason for going that direction is that a number of the programs that teachers and students use on those need a keyboard. And that physical keyboard just seems to be working better for the younger students. But they also still have that need for the tactile touch, so it's the best of both worlds for them. So that's what we're currently investigating. Um, the original financial, really all I want to point out here is we're in budget. We have, we've been doing great with that and we've been able to find purchases that stay within the budget. Um, you'll see a little TFO at the bottom. Originally there was some consideration of doing a tech fee offset and we have not needed to do that. We've been able to support the budget so I, I greatly appreciate that and we've been able to do that without a tech fee. Um, other considerations that you were looking at this, so um, device fees, and I addressed that a little bit, reduction of student fees, that happens so that we were able to support some other things. Um, we currently have a tech curriculum K through six, and we are going to continue to work on that through junior high and high school. Um, we have done some amazing things, uh, I, I should say we, Carl in particular, has done amazing things with the security of our devices. If I have a student report to me that their device is lost, 
We can lock it down immediately. It pops up a message to anyone who opens it. This is the property of Buckeye Local Schools. Please return it. It has been reported lost or stolen. So it's really nice that we have that kind of control. We can go in and see exactly the last time it was logged in and who logged into it. So we're pretty, we've had great success finding devices that were lost even when they were just lost in my locker for three weeks. Um, the battery life, we have had no problem with that. Um, we are on year two of the first devices, so we are confident that they will make it through year three next year. And the <coughs> footprint, um, some things that have changed since then is we were looking at smart boards and Mimeos, and now we are starting to purchase Clever Touch boards, which we purchased uh, 12 last year for kindergarten and first grade. Um, I think the only things I want to address on here are we're coming up on a decision point for what we do with the student devices at the end of life. And after discussing with other districts, we really have a couple options. One is we can, for a nominal fee, sell them to our students if they would like them. We do have a buyback program if there's someone willing to buy them. And if they're in such terrible condition that we can't, I have someone who will come and haul them away and not charge us anything and dispose of them appropriately. So we have some options there that we're trying to uh, get done for this year. I think uh, the other thing we did this year was update the board policies. So we're working on that. Students without home internet, um, Mr. Morgan passed on a contact to me who I had a great conversation with right before break. It is a grant opportunity to get home access at a greatly reduced rate for all of our students who don't have home access. So it is a grant proposal that I am working on. So I will update you on that as we get more information and see how we go in that grant process. So um, the things that we have done to help implement this, uh, one was an inventory management system that we have. It not only allows us to keep track of who has what device, and, but it allows us to track what repairs they come in for, what we've done for them, have we sent it back for warranty. So in Snipeit, I can document that we have processed more than 1,392 repairs since um, November of 26, and I put repairs in quotes because those are not all physical repairs. Sometimes they are a software issue, and we just need to reset something or clear the cache or do something to update. And I say we process more than that because those are the ones we document. That doesn't include you're walking down the hall and, hey, Amy, I've got a little problem. Can you help this real quick? Or the knocks on Carl's door with the six square going, uh, my Mac isn't doing it. And there are lots of those that we don't document because they're just a quick flyby in the hall. We're not purchasing anything to fix it. It's just our time. Um, new items for consideration, replacement of smart boards, which I told you a bit about before. Our smart boards are supposed to have a, a shelf life of about 10 years. Ours were purchased in 2004, so we have really gotten our use out of them, but they really are dying, and we're doing the best we can to keep them up and running as we work out a replacement plan. Um, we're thinking that it would be better at this point to upgrade our labs in each building rather than adding carts. Um, it's a little more cost effective, and I think that we can get a little bit better device for the price. Um, and then just considering how we're going to fund the replacement of staff devices as that becomes um, necessary in the next couple years. And I'm not able to click forward, so does that mean I'm done? Hot diggity. All right. Thank you Thank so you. much. Amy, how yes. are we set for testing? We have enough access points? Yes, that. and today was day one, and it was beautiful. I won't say it was completely flawless, but it went very well, other than a couple of problems that actually in the end turned out not to be on our end, but from the state. We're, we really, I think it went fairly well today. So high school, I think, had almost zero problems because they're just such old hats at this. Junior high was pretty close, and the things that we had here, again, they were nothing within our control. So yeah, went pretty well today. Thank you. Thank you. And our last uh, presentation is the Buckeye Counselor's Curriculum presentation. Um, the counselors have been working since last year to develop a document that you guys have for review um, to hopefully approve at the next board meeting. 
Um, it is their K-12 comprehensive guidance uh, curriculum for the district. So I did ask them to come tonight. They've been working really hard on that document, and it is very long because they do a lot of things in the district. Um, and as Amy mentioned with testing, I wanted to first take a quick second to thank the counselors who are working with testing. I did not ask them to do a PowerPoint because I don't know if you know this, but testing is its own like academic season, like a sports <laughs> season, but it's like testing season. And for these guys, that's, it is so high stress. So I want to thank these three for that work. And I also want to thank um, Gail Telford here because she has single-handedly helped to coordinate bringing in trauma-informed care training for the district for next year. And I know when I need any community organizations to come in to help with any kind of training, Gail's my go-to for that. So she's been instrumental in bringing that stuff in this year as well. Um, so I just asked them to quickly go over some of the services that are offered at each of their buildings. We do have uh, Amanda Hogue and Jen Witch from the high school. We have Vicki from the primary and Gail who is across the district. So um, I'm just going to leave them to just briefly summarize some of the things. If we went through all 55 pages of their curriculum, we would be here all night. So just a quick couple of snippets from each of them. Um, so I'm Amanda Polk. I'm one of the counselors at the high school along with Jen Mish. Um, we started this project uh, almost really two years ago. We sat down um, with guidance from our national organization um, as a way to try to put into words what all we do, um, which was incredibly daunting, which is why it took about two years. Um, Jen and I wear many different hats every single day. Um, I actually got to work at 6 o'clock this morning to finish organizing because we tested um, 190 juniors for the SAT. We tested 206 freshmen on the English end of course one test and about 22 <coughs> sophomores on the end of course English two test um, throughout the day with the help of our staff. Um, on top of that, we have students in and out, we have seniors getting ready to graduate, we have seniors who may not get um, into colleges that we're trying to work with. Um, freshman, transitioning to sophomore year, we've worked with the junior high to get the grade ready to come up to the high school. Um, we have AP testing still coming up, so our testing hasn't even really fully started yet, uh, on top of everything else that we, we try to cram into an eight hour day. Um, we also work closely with our administrators. We help create and implement the master schedule. Um, we work a lot with Dazzle, which is our scheduling software. We also spend time with the community, with staff members. We actually have a lunch meeting tomorrow. Um, if you have a senior or have gone through or scholarships, the Bealey Foundation is very generous and potentially you might have 51 seniors tomorrow who can be eligible for $1,000 a piece. So, we're going to work really hard to, to convince them to give us $51,000, so wish us luck. We work closely with the Career Center. We, um, many of our juniors and seniors are at the Career Center, and we work with the counselors there to make sure that they're still on track for graduation and um, that they're progressing through their programs there, so that's another, um, another area that we, we keep up on. Um, with the state changing requirements quite frequently, we work with um, our administration and our students on um, making sure that they have the appropriate amount of credits and points, and we've been working a lot with um, Ohio News Jobs and the Readiness Seal and seeing how we can implement um, more career opportunities for our students. We also um, have a really close partnership with both Gail Telford and, and Ron Blue. Um, at the high school, we do meet with students individually or in groups, but it's more of like a almost like a triage. They come to us in crisis and, and we try to patch them up and then figure out what the next step is. Um, whether that's talking to their parents, meeting with Mr. Blue, setting up something with Mrs. Telford. Mrs. Telford thankfully runs our group for us at the high school, so we have many options in that area. Um, but it really is, it's a group effort for all of us. We, uh, we rely on each other to get through. Hi, Mom. I think you love me. I'm at the primary level and um, I'm just really excited about the opportunity to sit down with these lovely ladies and work on a guidance curriculum together. I've been here at Buckeye probably more years than I'd like to admit because that would be admitting how much older I am than the ladies, but the other ladies that are up here and we don't want to have that discussion here tonight. But I'm excited about it because I think it's the first time that we've really had a good plan that we can present to the board and to the public to let them know. And I think Amanda said it, that all the different hats that we do wear, there's many um, 
jobs that the guidance counselor takes on. Um, some of those are planned, some of those are unplanned, that we take those on every single day. And I don't think, I think, and I'll include myself in that, we're a pretty humble bunch all together, and I don't think we do probably as good of a job as we should have of communicating to people all the many things that we do do and the extra things that we take on because we care about kids and we're willing to take on those things to help, um, you know, a, make, create a program that's going to help all kids be successful at Buckeye. And a lot of the things that they talked about, we don't do the level of those things at our elementary building. We're not doing scheduling. We're not doing nearly as many tests as they do. And I'm sure every one of us here would say that we have the hardest task at our building, but I'm just going to throw it out there and say that I think we have the hardest task at our building. Because, <laughs> um, I know you probably think little kids, smaller problems, but you know every kid comes to us here at Buckeye at a different level, whether that's social, emotional, or academically. We have kids that come to us as readers, kids that come to us as non-readers. So at our level, we're trying to really assess those kids to meet them at the level that they're at coming in, lay those foundation skills for them, whether that's academically or socially, so those kids are able to be successful. Um, as we continue out for our district. And I always say, <coughs> Don and I talk about this a lot, our most important job is relationship building with these parents out there. Because for a lot of them, it's their first experience um, with Buckeye, with our staff, and it's it's our job, and I think it's an awesome job, is to instill a trust in them, that they can count on us to um, you know help their kids. And so um, at elementary, that's why I kind of feel like we really have a big task there, even though we're not touching as big a thing as they are as far as um, the scheduling and the testing, but we're meeting those little kids as they come in. And um, I just love the opportunity the last several years I've been able to do Safety Town because I get that chance to meet them as they come in and help those kids when they transition into school. And it's a wonderful job and it's never a dull moment. <laughs> and so, you know, any, anytime I'm sure any of us are welcome to come in and spend a day walking um, the schedule with us and, and see what our day is like so that you could really understand the whole comprehensive scope of things that we do every day at our building and Ron Blue and Gail have been a wonderful addition. Gail has been coming down to our building and helping me with groups and seeing individual kids. And as the requirements become bigger and bigger throughout the state, our job gets bigger and bigger and so um, I think it becomes even bigger of a task to meet those kids at the individual level. So it's always good to have that extra support to help the kids at the end of the day. They're our new goal. And um, I think our job changes as the needs of the community change. So it's an ever-changing job, and I think everyone here is probably so able to do a wonderful job doing that. So, thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Gail Salter. I am uh, the District Prevention Coordinator, and I work very closely with all the guidance counselors. I have the utmost respect for every single one of them. Um, it's, a, it's a joy to be able to collaborate at each building with each of these counselors over the years. Uh, this is probably one of the best teams that I've worked with um, because they do really want to collaborate and make things happen for kids and, and utilize the services that I have to the best of their ability. I see my job with them as kind of filling those gaps. Um, I do a lot of community collaboration. I attend various meetings within the county for trauma and care, um, crisis response team. I'm the team leader in the district for that. I, I work to make sure that our entire team come together when we have a crisis and we all can rely on each other and we know what our resources are and we're all trained in the same intervention skills. Um, I also bring in services. Uh, recently we've, um, we've utilized the, um, uh, the health department. We have a person coming in and teaching uh, about vaping in our uh, eighth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, tenth grade, and next month we're actually in <coughs> sixth grade. So um, we're utilizing their services to try and get more and more information to our kids as well. We have a, um, I work very closely with um, John Gerard and our D.A.R.E. program and the services that he's offering in prevention. And I absolutely love working with him as well. He's a, a great collaborator. We, we do, um, we try to make a point of making sure that we are teaching kids about prescription drug abuse and use, um, K through 12. So he and I both work so that we're covering every grade. He does uh, the elementary grades, and then he. Um, I also incorporate through Huddle in um, some of our Huddle curriculum on that issue. We do uh, high school, junior high. Um, it's just been a great collaboration to make sure that we touch upon that in every single grade, um, and that we're making sure that kids are getting the message out there about what's really happening and how to make good choices. I do a number of groups um, in all buildings for kids who need additional support. I see kids individually. I work a lot of the elementary with the kids. 
that's been a great experience for me this year. I really love working with them. It's a, a real joy to be able to start working with them at the, in the primary and then be able to see them all the way through if I can. I'm still here because I'm not as young as these guys, but I have a good 10 years left, so this is really exciting for me. Um, but uh, I, I really like to be able to see the whole picture, and I love bringing the community into our district and utilizing all the resources that we have in that county because, you know, my collaboration with the county as far as working with other schools, working with all the agencies, is it, this is just an incredible county to work in. And there's a lot out there that we can utilize the resources we have. In the <coughs> and I think, you know, Buckeye is, is, a, is a resource itself. It's just a great community to work in. So. It's been really exciting for me for the last 20 years and um, to continue to be able to work with these guys and collaborate and with administrators and uh, students and faculty has been great. So, um, just glad to be here. Thank you. And I know in my career, the changes that have happened with concerts, it's crazy. And the needs our students have with all the families. And so we thank you for the resources that you provide. And, we know we could do a whole lot more with more people, but that's just, it's just difficult to do. We thank you for our Yes, one question. Yes. The, uh, how much is the additional pathways towards graduation put on to the two of you? How much time do you have? That, that seems like, like it's a, a great big different thing. You have to look at all the different directions in which somebody can so we have uh, about 195 seniors in our graduating class. I have, um, I have a spreadsheet that I've started when they were juniors, really tracking points. And we, we still have about 26 who, um, in terms of graduation, it's going to come down to their, the very last day of school for them. Um, just in terms of trying to track attendance, which that is a whole other mess, trying to figure out hours. In case you're ever wondering, there's 6.33 hours in a senior school day. Um, go ahead and try to figure that out when they're tardy, five minutes here, 10 minutes there. I think it's a little long. Um, GPA, the crew center has been great. They brought back um, Rick Forney, who is just my savior over there. I tell him that all the time. Um, he has been an absolute dream to work with and has helped me a lot with those kids just because we don't really have access to them. So he's tracking hours, we're tracking work hours. We've created a capstone project. We have a couple seniors who are gonna do 30 hours for the of job shadowing experience and do a project on that. We have students who took the ACT work piece. Um, so I, I scrambled a few weeks ago and contacted ACT um, and, and became an administrator for that test and administered it to um, seniors. And so far we're at um, almost 100% success rate with that. So it's it's like trying to put out fires that just keep relighting. Um, it's been a continuous process of meeting with those yeah. students who have we haven't met their points and making sure you know we don't have just two pathways for them because what if one of those pathways don't pan out so we want to have multiple options for them so we don't get to the 11th hour and um, you know we're in a crisis mode so meeting with them continuously and, and, and tracking their different pathways is, yeah. yes, it's, and it's again it's another you know another team effort we've reached out um, we're lucky we get to meet monthly at the career center with counselors from across the county um, so we get to learn from each other you know, what works here, what have you guys tried? Um, I think we're one of the only districts who've done work piece so far, and, and we're actually meeting on Thursday, and I'm excited to tell them, like, go do this, because kids yeah. do really well with it, and it's something they can, can give to employers, and I think starting next year, they can qualify for a work readiness seal, which um, the state of Ohio is trying to make a, if you have that on your diploma, it's like a guaranteed interview. Um, for for certain employers. Yeah. So we, we are trying to be as creative as the state um, continues to let us be and, and hopefully they'll continue to go and it sounds like it's gonna come again for this this junior class as well. So we should agree with them. Recommendations. 
Item A, 2017-18 Buckeye School Calendar, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approval changes to the calamity day schedule for the 2017-18 school calendar. That reflects not extending the school day for the seventh calamity day, which is Appendix B. Uh, I would like to entertain a motion for this item. Awesome. Any questions of Mr. Morgan about this? Uh, I will be uh, voting against this. Uh, and the reason for that is that I believe that it diminishes the uh, great work that our <coughs> staff does on a daily basis um, by saying that we can just forget about the day. We just heard about how they're counting hours and we're going to be forgetting about 6.33 hours. Um, I just don't feel as though that is in the best interest of our students. The, uh, I know when they leave here to go work in a business somewhere, uh, a lot of businesses, there's more work when it's cold or snowing. And I just don't feel as though I can support it. Appreciate your comments. Um, I'm going to be supporting this because of the change from days to hours, um, we have more than is certainly required um, for school attendance, and that's a reason for me to support it. Any other comments? Roll call. Bertie? Yes. Don? Yes. Berko? No. Donlin? Yes. Item B, approval of University of Akron MOU agreement to resolve the Buckeye Board of Education to approve the MOU for the College Credit Plus CCP partnership agreement with the University of Akron for the 18-19 school year. A copy of the MOU will be on file in the Treasurer's Office, Appendix C. Item C, agreement with Steps Academy to resolve the Buckeye Board of Education to approve the Steps contract for professional services for the 2017 school year, including the summer program for a Buckeye student. Steps agrees to provide educational services and behavioral support for a qualifying student. A complete copy of the agreement will be held on file in the Treasurer's Office, <coughs> Appendix D. Item D, approval to advertise for bids. Upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education adopts the resolution showing intent to participate in the OSC Cooperative School Bus Purchasing Program at no additional cost and authorizes the district to purchase one bus and one van, Appendix E. Item E, approval of agreement. Resolve the Buckeye Board, the Buckeye Board approved the agreement with Neonet to provide discounted managed internal broadband services through E-rate at the annual cost of $13,932 for fiscal year 2018 through fiscal year 2021. A copy of the agreement will be attached to board members' agendas as appendix F1 and F2. F, item F, architect agreement resolved the Buckeye Board of Education approved the architectural fees from our architectural strategies, LLC, for the design of the junior high and high school entrances, appendix G. Item G. 2018-19 Buckeye School Calendar resolved the Buckeye Board of Education through the changes to the February Elementary Conference Date Schedule for the 2018-19 School Calendar. And item H, approval of Buckeye School Academic Achievement Strategic Plan resolved the Buckeye Board of Education through the Academic Achievement portion of the Buckeye Local Schools Five Year Strategic Plan as submitted Appendix H. A motion for these recommendation items. Second. Second. Any questions on those items? Roll call. Stahl? Yes. Marco? Yes. Matson? Yes. <laughs> Pavarti? Yes. Duncan? Yes. Item I, approval of the BSN Sports Corporate Sponsorship Agreement, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education, approve the contract with BSN for a corporate sponsorship program offering premier pricing for footwear, clothing, and equipment purchased by Buckeye Local Schools, Appendix I. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? I second. Any questions about that contract? 
Roll call. Virgie? Yes. Argo? Yes. Matthew? Yes. So? No. Oh. Yes. New business. New business, we have our next installment of the strategic plan with community involvement, Mr. Flood. I was asked to present our part of the strategic plan and through this uh, you'll see that we have four common goals that we've been working on as well as uh, as we go through these goals, some of the things that I think that we have been working on as a district and still some things that I think that we need to continue to work on. Uh, then the very first goal that we have here is uh, communication, increased flow of information between schools and community members to allow for greater understanding and support between schools and our community. And then with that being said, some of the tasks that we've already completed or we've been working on is uh, redesigning of the website, increase ease of use and emphasis on student learning and achievement, and then continue to build social media presence. Uh, Mrs. Goodwin has been a huge part of that for us. And then our online presence involving Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then uh, Buckeye Blast calls and emails. Uh, is administrators, we're trying to get that information out to our parents as quickly and as often as possible. Uh, some things that next steps that we need to take with this goal would be creating a newsletter used to be published in-house and distribute to our community. So let, uh, the next thing, solicit and combine articles about student achievement and uh, to be distributed electronically and then design a form to be placed on the website to solicit uh, community feedback from our community. The next thing, community service here to increase student community involvement through service projects to allow students to learn through, uh, through service and for the community of mutual benefit. Some of the tasks completed here, um, provide opportunities for groups of students to work with local organizations such as Feeding Medina County um, and community, with our community service center and then Codes for Kids. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is at the junior high uh, this past month, we had run a program where we brought our students in in order to get into that program, they had to bring them a soup and we donated over 3,000 cans to feeding Medina County. So um, the next thing down there at the bottom is uh, build and increase uh, working mutual supportive relationship between the schools and community uh, businesses. And I know that Mr. Parrish has been a big part of that where he's already getting us involved with many of these businesses out there. Um, some steps that we need to take probably in that next direction being provide opportunities for our groups of students to travel off campus to volunteer with local organizations such as Feeding Medina County or a community service center. Um, and then provide a way for our junior high and high school students to officially record volunteer hours uh, to motivate greater success and in student involvement. The next goal that we have is, uh, and within our business, is build an increase working and mutually supportive relationship between the schools and community businesses to benefit both students and our local business economy. Some of the tasks there are provided, um, provide local tours for our students, and then provide targeted interview opportunities, bringing students and businesses together there. And then some of the next steps that we need to work on still, um, form a local business and school communications network, which will notify participating businesses and organizations if need does arise, and establishing a job fair K-12 grades, uh, businesses to come in and highlight their businesses. One of the things that we've talked about is even coming, like for example, at the junior high coming in and talking about what their businesses entail and possibly how students one day might want to establish themselves with such a place. The next one is with our alumni and creating an alumni network to communicate accomplishments, invite alumni to events, increase community goodwill, and help with needs as necessary. Uh, next steps there that I think we need to really continue to work on would be uh, to create a database of alumni, which I know we've started to really establish that. I know that Mr. Tudor and Mr. Morgan have gone out and spoken with 
our alumni. And then with that, one of the other things that we've talked about is within each sports season, declare a varsity game as an alumni day, invite alumni to the game and to our network and media outlets. And again, that's uh, our strategic plan with the community engagement. Any questions with that at all? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Here's that for you guys. Thank you. Item B, first reading of the, of the following policy, resolve that the Buckeye Board of Education consider the policy listed below as presented. Copy of the complete policy is attached to board member's agenda as appendix J. 7530.01 wireless communication allowance and staff use of wireless communication devices. Item C, first reading of student curriculum, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education re review the AP psychology course syllabus designed for grades 9 through 12 as submitted by Dr. Christina Collins. The syllabus is provided by the College Board and has been reviewed by Mr. Joe Serio and will be the basis for instruction as a new course. A copy of the curriculum will be attached to the board members agenda as appendix K. Item <coughs> D, first reading of student curriculum. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education review the K-12 Comprehensive Guidance Curriculum as submitted by Dr. Christina Collins. This curriculum was designed by district counselors including Mrs. Vicki Ludwig, Ms. Candace Sablotny, Mrs. Brittany Cates, Mrs. Jen Wish, Mrs. Amanda Hogue, and Mrs. Gail Telford. A copy of the curriculum will be attached to the board members agenda as appendix L. Any questions? Personnel? Personnel, item A, certified personnel resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the following personnel items as presented. Uh, number one, new continuing contracts issued beginning with 2018-19 school year. Item two is the one-year contracts beginning with 2018-19 school year expiring July 31st, 2019. Item three, non-renewal of extended time contracts. Resolve to non-renew the following extended time contracts for the 18-19 school year. Recall for the 18-19 will be based on approval and need. This is an annual routine action. And number four, suspension of contracts upon the completion of the 2017-18 contract of school year. Approve the suspension of the contracts of the following employees until such time that the funding and needs of the district are known for the 2018-19 school year. Item B, classified substitutes, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education, approve the attached list of classified substitutes to work on an as needed basis for the 2017 school year, Andrew Wolf, custodial. And item C, supplemental contract approval, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education, approve the following supplemental contracts, pending certifications, as well as resignations, effective for the 17 school year, as listed. All right, uh, motion on those personnel items. Second. Questions or comments on those? Roll call. Stop. Yes. Martin? Yes. Martin? Yes. Yes. Item D, Washington, D.C. parent chaperones as presented. A motion to accept those um, chaperones. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. And roll call. Marco? Yes. Marky? Yes. Adam? Yes. Tom? Yes. Stan? Yes. We'll move on to donations. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education accept and recognize the following donations to Buckeye Local Schools as presented. Donation of books for the elementary library from PTO Book Fairs held in the fall of 2017 and the spring of 2018 valued at $15,000. $477.59. Item B, donation of one set of wood and fasteners for the intermediate flower bed and one set of wood and fasteners for the primary flower bed from Max Lumber to or for Mrs. Barnhart's Buckeye Busy Bee Gardeners valued at $227. And item C, donation from the Buckeye Education Foundation for the Cooking in the Classroom Project in the primary building in care of Ms. Petrus, Mrs. DePriest, and Ms. Cato for $500. A motion for those donations to be accepted. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Marty. Yes. Bell. Yes. Parker. Yes. Manton. Yes. Yes. Now, I know we're going to have a need for executive session, but I'm going to skip on down to board comments um, so we can do that first. Um, Mr. Barco. 
Just a few, but uh, thank you for the administrators for the presentation you guys did. That was awesome. Um, and Christine and the guidance counselors for the curriculum. I mean, there's a lot of work that went that. We really appreciate it. Um, the PTO, $50,000 worth of books. It's awesome. So thank you, Jasmine, as well. Uh, I did have the opportunity to attend the Medina Economic Development Meeting last week. And uh, in case you didn't know, Mr. Morgan was the guest speaker. And did an outstanding job, and I heard from uh, Julie Marshall and Barbara Desir and Mary Ann all afterwards about uh, how impressed they were with Buckeye because we are part of the city, it is a small part, but uh, just the things that were going on here at Buckeye, you presented part of the strategic plan as well as a general overview, and uh, did a really great job. So I uh, appreciate the job that Kent did, and uh, appreciate the job that Kent did in general, actually, since. Uh, they're a new team this year, and I think they've done an outstanding job. I appreciate what they've done. So, thank you. Thanks for coming. Mrs. Kovarty? Well, I'll keep it short, but I was so impressed with the STEM um, demonstration. That was fun. I, I, I love when the kids come in and show off what, what they're doing. That was, that was really nice. Very enjoyable. So, that's all. That's your hand. Oh, thanks. And, um, so many wonderful things from all the administrators who gave us reports tonight and it's hard to believe that i've been away from it just for a few years and so much is changing so fast i feel like i'm not keeping up so i appreciate that you are um, to keep us straight and i just want to say that the guidance counselors it's guidance counselors are so important to a school district because they are that wraparound service that needs to be provided to the family as well as the students. So we really appreciate all that you do and good luck with all your testing this week. Yeah. Um, all right then, so we're gonna go back up. We know we have a need for executive session for the purposes of employment. Are we gonna talk about those other things we didn't get to? Uh, purchase of property for public purposes. Um, preparing or conducting or reviewing negotiations and specialized details of security arrangements. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Second. Okay. okay. And uh, we will not anticipate any action after executive session. Roll call. Stop. Yes. Marco. Yes. Nancy. Yes. 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 All right. <laughs>